Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone let's start we are going to start a new session and in the last session we discussed about different schools of economic thought in macroeconomics and we had almost introduced ourselves with the keynesian i would say classical keynesian new keynesian new classical then we also had the the, the idea about the salt water and fresh water schools of economic thought how they think about how they perceive about different types of policies whether it should be market oriented or it should be government oriented what will be the scope of intervention in the market or in the functioning of the market so we have already examined these things from the perspective of different thinkers that how they have contributed in this class we will be taking the perspective of neo classical and then we will be trying to see that how we are trying to understand the behavior of policy makers how far policy makers try to integrate the behavioral changes or human behavior in the policy making and when they formulate the policy whether those dimensions are also looked at so rational expectations uh, has a uh, lot of role in the area of macroeconomics because it allows you to understand the the deviations from the normality that we have that if you are introducing any random shock to the macroeconomic system how far it is feasible to achieve or to reach towards equilibrium if you are reaching towards equilibrium even after this after this disturbance or the learning that happens so whether it, it is appropriate how far we can accommodate this for macroeconomists it has been a major challenge since the beginning and people have gone through different types of models so whether it is if you talk about econ matrix so whether it is simultaneous equation model simultaneous equation based macroeconomic models or i would say reduced form models where we have a different types of of reduced form equations even incorporating structural changes with certain coefficients i would say restrictions on certain coefficients so we try to understand the macroeconomic behavior in that environment here we are looking at at i would say at a very micro level and we are trying to understand that if you have some expectations working in the market with simple demand and supply scenario are we able to understand the behavioral changes that we are observing in the economy so if we can think about understanding those dimensions then it will be easier to understand the i would say the policy stance of the government policy stance of the central bank there is a role of expectations so once we have once we are analyzing the role of expectations in the model then it becomes really important that we should be at least trying to understand that how individuals go about forming such expectations so if they are simply going about based on the previous information or based on collating the whole lot of information whatever they have or based on some expertise if they can analyze that kind of information then that gives us the broad framework to introduce certain kind of policy variables and analyze that whether those peri peri policy variables are Im also impacting so expectations has have a lot of role in macroeconomic policies so in this session we will be devoting more time on setting the framework and understanding with simple with simple macroeconomic models that how rational expectations uh, uh, theories have been analyzed in macroeconomics and then we will be also towards the end i will be giving you some hint about how new uh, keynesian took it over so from salt water and fresh water you can think about that we are trying to understand from the 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 i would say uh, uh, the model starting model is starting from the fresh water then it goes into the salt water where the salt water economists tested this or tossed this idea of uh, the rational expectation or also 
the Lucas critique that it will come later that whether the, the policy makers are able to understand or read the pulse of the different agents in the economy. If they are not able to read the pulse of different agents in the economy, then whatever policy activism they are taking or whatever measures they are, uh, they, they are planning to take, it will have no effect that the new keynesians with the with the framework of a rigid wage uh, they try to uh, at, they try to incorporate into model so stanley fisher is considered as the one of the major contributors in that uh, area so we will have those dimensions also to look at so let's uh, start so the reference for this particular session is benja hydra i am uh, referring foundations of modern macroeconomics so we have already covered this part so so let's go about and thinking uh, let's spend some time on understanding the rational expectation hypothesis what do you mean by rational expectation hypothesis when i use the term policy ineffectiveness proposition then what is the meaning of policy ineffectiveness uh, i would say proposition then we have something called lucas critic where it is applicable so we will be formulating some theories to understand this let's un understand with a simple uh, model with adaptive expectations where you are just thinking about uh, more relying on the immediate past. So if you have that kind of framework, so suppose E0 is the equilibrium, at this point you have a Y bar and then here you have the P0, this is the price. If I am uh, uh, trying to understand the expected role of expectation in the monetary policy framework when we have the increase in money supply. Now if, if you have the increase in money supply, then economy moves to point A which means that at this point we are disturbing the equilibrium. So now we are at Y transpose and P transpose. Now in order to make sure that you arrive at the same level of output, there is a learning happening here and this is moving further towards. So you have AD moving upward. So here it is AD1. Now you reach at point A where you find that this is the equilibrium output and it is not the same output. No, we are not at the same output. So here we are moving towards upward and we reach at point E1 and at E1 we are operating at the same but price level has gone up. Now this particular understanding of learning and further the shifting of certain I would say policy indicators in the economy has I would say a lot of bearing on the policy implications in the formulation. So for example in this case if this is a simple case of monetary policy, then we see that whenever we have increase in money supply from the simple Friedman idea that we have the rise in price level at the given output. But the movement from E to A and A to E1, it involves certain amount of learning and that we say that this is happening because agents are not reacting immediately. They are, they are forming the expectation and based on those expectations, they are working with actual numbers and then they are trying to learn. So this learning process has a lot of applications in macroeconomics. So here this, this is what we try to understand that if you have the suppose the, the, if, if the individuals have some expectations about the uh, based on the previous period price if they are expecting about the future price if the future price is, is higher if they expect higher uh, price in future, then the actual higher price, which means that if you have expected that in next period inflation is going to be 5%, but inflation uh, is actually in the next uh, period happens to be only a 4%. Now, here the expectation about 5%, you will be supplying some amount of extra labor because you expect that price is going to be higher, then you tend to supply higher amount of labor and this will have further bearing on the the consumption pattern and also the amount of output produced. So as a result you feel that the output is going to produce more because you have more supply of labor if it is backed by the equal amount of supply of input and the technology. So you can see that in the beginning we have a wide difference between P0 and P transpose but after some point of time it is merging. So the gap is not narrowing. So if you have starting with T0 if the, if the individual is having information, you can see that as we move, we have the, the further differences between PE, the expected price, minus the actual price. The difference is narrowing. 
and this what we call the ideal case scenario where we have the perfect for, uh, foresight hypothesis which means that you are so exact about future expectation that even if there is a deviation you are able to understand that and based on that you formulate your expectation. So, such type of ideal scenarios are not available every time. So, in some cases it may be, but if you have deviations from some, such ideal situation then how you can uh, you can think about the role of expectation. So, that is the idea behind. So, expectational error that we have we try to understand by introducing some randomness to the model. So, whenever we are trying to specify a model, we try to introduce the stochastic term and we say that if this term disappears then you have the deterministic. So, which means that you have the you are almost matching with the perfect foresight. As long as we have the stochastic term attached with the model, then this will create some kind of deviations because this is the random shock which ha it has certain properties. So, as long as it is satisfying that it may not matter, but on average we say that the expectation has no role because it's, uh, the mean value is 0, but if it is higher then it is going to impact to the model. So, the deviation that we may not have uh, we, we may see here that could be because of the randomness into the model. So, rational expectation started from, from the adaptive expectation idea, but later it worked with more number of variables incorporating the changes in the model. So, this we try to understand here. Now, if you try to understand from the perspective of rational expectation hypothesis, then John Muth is, is, uh, uh, is having the name attached to the uh, it and then it is also considered, he is also considered as the major contributors of the rational expectation hypothesis. Now, the idea is simple, that is the simple idea is that whosoever is thinking about the, the future, then they have some amount of information and no one likes to waste that information, they would like to utilize. So, maybe if, if you are living in a country where the education system is uh, or the I would say the tertiary education or the secondary education is not that great, the majority is still illiterate. If the large number of population is illiterate, then of course, they will not create a, some kind of rational expectation kind of scenario. For rational expectation, you need to have the better idea about. So, this we try to understand it here. Now, if I if I am going to think about the rational economic agent, so here it works in this way. So, here you have the rational expectation hypothesis. Here we say that the subjective expectation that individual is forming based on the previous period information, it coincides with the objective expectation. So, whatever is going to be the actual based on previous period expectation, if you are able to arrive at. So, the previous period is it is nothing but the subjective that we call it. So, rational expectation hypothesis equates economic agent subject expectation, subjective expectation to the mathematical prediction. So, this is how they try mathematical prediction, how it works, we will be examining that. Now, let us un understand with the simple model. Here, the simple model is this, where we have QTD is equal to A0 minus A1 PT. Now, A1 is greater than 0 because of this magnitude, but relationship is negative with the QD. So, this is the demand. This is the supply where in supply we are having QTS is equal to B0 plus B1 PET plus here you have the error term. Once I give, once I introduce the error term here with the supply, so it becomes QTS is equal to B0 plus B1 PET plus UT. So, here also we have B1 greater than 0 and then here we have the QDT is equal to QST. So, this is the demand is equal to supply this is the demand, this is the supply and in supply we always say that here you have the role of expectations which means that here you are forming the expectation based on the previous. So, whether I have added this particular part or not, so here it works that in most of the cases no, I will be coming to that part very soon. So, here you have to understand that demand depends upon the actual price supply depends upon the expectations regarding the current price which means that in the previous period you might have uh, or based on some information you have expected some output and this is the market clearing mechanism. 
Now, ut is the random shock that is the most important characteristics of the rational expectation model and this has a lot of bearing on the policy formulations. So, understanding of this is crucial. Now, if I am going to think about the PET, this is what we have the, the expectations about the price. So, PET it is nothing but expectation of PT conditional upon all the information that you have in the previous period which means that if I am going to, uh, to replace this particular term, so it becomes expectation of t minus 1 p t. So, if you are forming the expectation in the previous period about the current price, so this is what we try to achieve in this. Now, let us see this part. So, if I am saying that this particular gamma is having uh, these variables incorporated, which means that it, it incorporates the price in period t minus 1 in t minus 2 it also incorporates the quantity prices in the previous periods also then here you have the coefficient so coefficients are what a0 a1 b0 b1 and then you have the error term now this stochastic error term has certain properties that expectation of ut is equal to 0 the variance is constant the 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 the, the correlation with its own lag is 0 which means that no auto correlation correlation with some other variables. So, which means that covariance of ut and some pt or qt variables it is 0. So, all these properties are just for the sake of basic econ matrix if you are aware those assumptions we are uh, formulating here. But the ideal point is to note is that this information that you have a past you are incorporating all in your expectation t minus 1 to predict about the current price level information. So, this is what we say. So, expectation of t minus 1 p t is important to derive uh, or to, to have some idea about the current prices. So, this is how we always try to uh, mention it about and in the rational expectation process you try to incorporate all your information whatever you have. Now, if you just think about solving it how we can solve since you have the residual term or the random term. So, it is simple demand supply scenario. See, if I am going for Q D is equal to Q S, then it becomes like this. So, if I am just making demand equal to supply, so if I am just equating this Q D is equal to Q S, so we are getting this particular value. So, Q T is equal to it becomes A 0 minus A 1 P T is equal to B 0 plus B 1 P E T plus U T and if I solve for P T here, I get A 0 minus B 0, this will come this side. Then here we have minus B1 PET minus UT upon A1. So, this is how we are driving. One of the important things to note is that here we are having the residual term, the random term and this will play important role later. Now, as I told that here you have the, the expectations playing a role because you have the information at T minus 1. So, this we are taking into account. So, we are introducing expectation to this particular. So, here we have expectation of t minus 1 p t, we have got p t here, we are introducing expectation to this. So, this becomes expectation of t minus 1 p t is equal to expectation of t minus 1. Here it is a 0 minus b 0 minus b 1 p e t minus u t upon a 1. We know that the expectation of this is 0. So, this becomes 0. What we are having is this that a 0 minus b 0 upon a 1 minus b 1 upon a 1. Here you have expectation of t minus 1 p e t minus 1 upon a 1 expectation of t minus 1 u t. So, if I take out the expectations operator a 0 a 1 b 0 b 1 then the we know that the expectation of this is same expectation of the error term is 0. So, we are having only this particular part. Here this particular part will not be added because this if you operate the expectation then this is going to be 0 because this is the assumption we have made. Now, you can see that the demand coefficient that we had here it is coming in the numerator a 1, it is coming in the numerator everywhere. So, a we have added right. Now, we want to again see that how much I can get about. So, here you have a. So, here we have the objective expectation and b here you have the subjective expectations right. So, here based on this we have the subjective expectation. If I am going to write about this particular part that how it works then we can simply say that we are getting the expectation of t minus 1 p t 
is equal to a0 minus b0 upon a1 minus b1 upon a1 and expectation of t minus 1 p e t it is written here it is the same p e t that we have. So, here we are having the same value. According to rational expectation hypothesis the objective uh, expectation which is expectation of t minus 1 p t it must be equal to subjective. Now, here we can solve for the subjective expectation. So, if you are solving for subjective expectations you get this particular uh, expression a 0 minus b 0 upon a 1 minus b 1 upon p e t which means that it is the same that we have. So, expectation of so p e t is nothing but expectation of t minus 1 p t is equal to a 0 minus b 0 upon a 1 plus b 1 which means that rational expectation hypothesis assumes that your objective expectation is equal to subjective expectation. So, here we have uh, fulfilled that criteria and after solving this is what we get. Now, what the actual market clearing price look like? So, if I am going to substitute this P E T right here in 1 in 1 here in P E T then we can get the P T value. So, how much I am going to get the P T value? Yeah, I am substituting this here. I have the PT value A0 minus B0 upon A1 plus B1 minus 1 upon A1 UT which means that if I have PT is equal to P bar minus 1 upon A1 UT. So, this becomes the important part. Here your PT is nothing but if, uh, if, if this is the equilibrium price then e e equilibrium price will be equivalent to PT if this is PT is equal to P bar as long as this u t is equal to 0, as long as it, this u t is not appearing then your system is deterministic you do not have to worry about. But in real life that is not the case the deviation happens through this. So, this u t will be factored into the p bar because this will be subtracted here and this will depend upon the magnitude of a 1 which is coming from demand. So, if I am saying about the magnitude of a 1 so this is coming from here that we have this is coming from here. So, this is the coefficient of demand equation. What we are mentioning that as long as this is 0 we do not have to worry about we uh, reach towards the equilibrium price, but if it is not 0 and this could be because of the not good monsoon not good rainfall or there is sudden demand rise or if you have uh, 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 imbalance. So, sudden you have uh, some kind of kind of natural hazard. So, that has created extra pressure. So, those things are added here. So, here it is P t is equal to P bar minus 1 upon A u t and u t is playing very important role. So, the idea behind rational expectation is that if you are giving shock to a system as long as that shock is active you may not be achieving the or you may not be having the perfect foresight kind of scenario. But as long as you have the random term equivalent to 0 or if it is disappearing then you have the deterministic system operating and then you may achieve the perfect forecast, forecast or foresight scenario. So, this is how it deals with. Now, here so, so far the major learning of this is that in order to understand the demand supply scenario or price and quantity you need to understand the behavior or the importance of objective expectation and subjective expectations both have a major role here. And this was why the simple price quantity relationship. We will be seeing the macroeconomics part. So, Sargent and Wallace are known to challenge the notion of the government intervention by the policy makers and they introduce this idea with the certain expectation that this idea will not uh, be holding for certain types of macroeconomic policy design. So, the Lucas, Sargent, Wallace and Barrow they are created to introduce the um, uh, rational expectation hypothesis in macroeconomics. The Sargent and Wallace work of 1975 is created to challenge the, the new Keynesian idea of rigidity into the model and they uh, provided the explanation for that. And Lucas uh, later became uh, uh, he advocated about the role of 
the inclusion of behavioral aspect which means that micro foundations must be there into the model then only you will understand the behavior in a much better way. So, at that time people were more relying on the macroeconometric model, lengthy models and try to estimate the policy design and they used to uh, or they used to design the policies using those equations. So, for the first time they received the shock by having a such type of analysis. So, here we have the simple ISLM rational expectation model. So, here we have y t is equal to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 p t minus expectation of t minus 1 p t plus e u t and here we have y t is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 m t minus p t and now here if we have suppose this these equations are coming from ISLM aggregate supply model. Now, here you can see that this particular case p t is equal to expectation of t minus p t. If p t is greater than expectation of t minus 1 p t then of course, the labor would be supplying more amount of labor because if the current price is greater than the previous period expected price which means that the, the, the expectation of individuals when they are forming expectation the actual uh, actual price is much higher then of course, you can think about that they will be supplying a higher amount of labor to the market and ultimately the output is going to increase and this creates a favorable scenario. But if it is higher, it should not be too high that people are discouraged. So, I am talking about the normal in inflationary scenario. If the inflation is so high that individuals are thinking that even if you work for 14 hours, we are not going to meet our daily life. So, it is better that let us not work at all. So, it is not that kind of scenario. I am showing the marginal variations that we expect in the economy. Then here we have a y t is equal to b 0 plus beta 1. So, here also here also we have p t 1 is greater than p t scenario. So, if expectation of t minus 1 about your future expectation. So, expectation of t minus 1 and here you have also the expectation of uh, uh, t minus 1 p t. So, if, if in, a, in a simple setup if the future price expectations are going to be higher then for the firms also it is good that they will be investing more money and this creates in, uh, this gives an extra incentive for the firms to invest. So, that we talk in the sense of Tobin effect that we always mention. This is the real balance effect that comes MT minus PT the, the real um, money that you have in your hand. So, real money supply or it also talks about when the relationship between money supply and prices rest of the variables as same. So, here uh, these two are having importance. The important things to note is about the u t and v t and these are the random terms. So, random terms we are attaching not just with the with the uh, first equation, but also which means the aggregate supply, but we are also attached attaching this to aggregate demand scenarios also. So, both aggregate demand and aggregate supply have the stochastic term. In the third equation we are introducing the money supply rule. So, in money supply rule we have m t is equal to mu 0 plus mu 1 m t minus 1 plus mu 2 y t minus 1 plus e t. So, here also you have the random term. So, suppose we have such a system of equations where you have the random term attached. So, before I move to, uh, to deal with further uh, uh, I would say explanation of these models and further operations and solving for the rational expectation hypothesis. I would like to uh, to conclude this session that in this particular session we introduced ourselves with the rational expectation idea and we uh, started looking at the difference between objective expectation and the subjective expectation how these two play very important role, how the individuals incorporate the new information, how do you go about the expectations. So, you can go on the RBI website and you will have the RBI inflation expectation survey. So, there also they incorporate such things and some of the researchers uh, those who have worked in or those who have examined that data they always come up with such type of recommendations that whether the inflation expectation is it is adaptive or the rational. So, such type of understanding helps the policy makers to design or to introduce the policy variables in a such manner that it really impacts all other macroeconomic variables and including the price level in the economy. So, when I introduced the random shock to the model and as long as it is available, it is very difficult to find out. But one of the good things that we are learning is that we are working out with the reduced form equations and there it becomes easier to understand. 
So, I am stopping it here and we will continue again in the next session. Thank you. Thank you so much.